Hi everyone, so today I'm going to talk about uh, stochastic neighbor embedding which is called SNE. So this SNE is a multivariate data visualization technique. So in this video I am going to explain you the uh, rationale behind SNE and uh, one of the uh, major extensions of this SNE which is called the TSNE also. Since we are living in this big data era, we have a lot of high dimensional data. So because of that, this uh, visualization of this high dimensional data is a very important problem. So when you consider these data visualization techniques, we can broadly categorize them into a uh, two subset. That means the uh, techniques that use dimension reduction and the uh, techniques that uh, don't use dimension reduction. So if you consider the uh, methods that uh, use dimension reduction, we can again categorize them into uh, uh, two subsets, such as uh, linear methods, for an example, PCA, and the uh, nonlinear methods, such as uh, maximum variance unfolding and SNE. So now uh, let's talk about these dimension reduction methods in general. So when you consider these uh, dimension reduction methods in terms of data visualization, what it will do is, it will first convert these uh, high dimensional data points into two, uh, two or uh, three dimensions. Because of that, we can visualize this data based on a scatter plot. Here, this main objective is to preserve the uh, most of these uh, significant structures in this high dimensional space as possible in our low dimensional space as well. So if you consider these uh, nonlinear methods, what it will do is it will identify a high dimensional manifold first. After that, it will uh, map this high dimensional manifold into a low dimensional manifold because of that we can visualize the data. Okay, so now we can explain this uh, using this example. Here, we can uh, treat this uh, graph A as our high dimensional space, which is a, a 3D space. So now you can see that this, all these, uh, I mean the most significant structure of this data is in a high dimensional manifold. So now what these uh, dimension uh, reduction methods is going to do is it is going to map this uh, high dimensional manifold into a low dimensional manifold like in this uh, graph C Bas because of that we can uh, visualize this data based on a scatter plot. So the uh, these are the main steps of this SNE. So first we are going to calculate the uh, similarities between these high dimensional data points and we are going to convert these similarities into probabilities. And after that, we are going to do a similar kind of thing for this low dimensional space as well. So that means we are going to calculate these um, similarities between the low dimension counterparts as well. But before that, uh, first we are going to initialize these locations of our low dimensional space. So after that, we can convert these uh, con uh, similarities into probabilities. Then uh, it is very possible that this uh, low dimensional space at the beginning uh, will not be a good uh, representative in terms of this uh, high dimensional data. So because of that, there is an error between these probabilities. So this error we are going to measure based on a cost function. So uh, basically, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to calculate this a uh, mismatch in terms of uh, probabilities based on this cost function, and we are going to optimize this cost function based on this gradient descent algorithm, iteration by iteration. Because of that, we can at the end uh, obtain this um, optimal locations of this low dimensional data. All right, so now I'm going to talk about SNE. So in order to explain the um, 
explain uh, what this SN is going to do. I am going to treat this a uh, two-dimensional space as my high-dimensional space, and I am going to show you how to map this a uh, two-dimensional space into a uh, 1D space based on SNE. So the main objective of this SNE is to uh, preserve this local structure of the data. So in this uh, graph, you can see that these uh, data points which belongs to one particular cluster are very nearby with each other. And also you can see, so uh, these kind of characteristics we actually called as uh, local structure of the data. And also you can see that uh, some clusters are, are well separated from the other clusters. Like here, as you can see that this cluster is well separated from the other clusters. So those kind of characteristics we called as local, uh, sorry, global structure of the data. So first, as I told you earlier, this SN is going to measure the similarities between the data points in this high dimensional space. So this most natural thing to do in terms of calculating the similarities between the data is to calculate the distances between the data. So what SN is going to do is it is going to convert these distances into conditional probabilities based on this conditional based on the definition of the conditional probability. So Based on the definition of the conditional probabilities, we can uh, derive this formula in order to calculate these conditional probabilities of uh, which is given by this uh, P sub uh, J given I. So in order to calculate the probabilities, they are going to calculate this based on this proportion of this normal, uh, normal uh, density that means Gaussian density which is uh, centered at this given data point. So if uh, two data points are very uh, nearby in that case these conditional probabilities will be uh, very high and for uh, widely uh, uh, separated data points these conditional probabilities will be very small. Okay so now I am going to demonstrate this idea. So let's say that uh, we are going to calculate these uh, similarities between these uh, black data point and uh, blue data point over here. So in order to do that, first I am going to draw this uh, normal distribution which is uh, centered at this uh, black data point like this. So with respect to this uh, normal distribution, we can say that this uh, blue data point is somewhere here, over here. Okay. So this similarities between these two data points, we can uh, treat it as this vertical distance from this uh, data point to this normal curve. And if you consider some other data point like this, here you can see this uh, orange data point is uh, in a, another cluster. So now you can see that this uh, corresponding this um, normal curve, you can see that this uh, orange data point is very far away because of that these uh, similarities between the data points are very low. So by doing like this we can calculate a probability matrix like this. So based on this probability matrix we can see that for a nearby data points there is a high similarities of the data and for uh, very well uh, separated data points there is a low similarity of the data in terms of probability. Okay, so that is how this SNE will work in this high dimensional data space. Now I'm going to show you how this SNE will work in this uh, low dimensional space. So first SNE will uh, initialize the locations of these data points in our low dimensional space. After that, it will, uh, based on those locations, Initially, it will calculate these uh, similarities of these uh, low dimensional data points in terms of the distances and it is going to convert these uh, distances into conditional probabilities like we uh, told before based on the same method. So here, if we have done a very good job in terms of uh, mapping these uh, conditional probabilities, uh, that means 
uh, if we have done a, a very good job in terms of uh, mapping these uh, high dimensional data points into this uh, low dimensional space then these uh, respective conditional probabilities should be very similar with each other Uh, so, in order to identify these optimal locations, as I told you earlier, it is going to calculate the errors between these conditional prob uh, probabilities between these uh, high dimensional space and low dimensional space. So, it is going to measure these errors based on a cost function. This cost function is called as this Kullback labor divergence or KL divergence. So, this KL divergence is actually uh, measuring the mismatch in terms of these uh, two probability distributions. So, in order to identify these optimal locations, it is going to minimize these cost functions uh, based on this uh, gradient descent algorithm. So, it is great that if you have a, a good knowledge about this gradient descent uh, algorithm because uh, because it will uh, help you to explain this um, SNE very well. So, this uh, when you consider this uh, cost function in SNE, it is not actually symmetric. That means the, uh, that this uh, cost which is allocated for each data point will not be equal. The main reason is that uh, the main objective of this SNE is to uh, preserve the local structure of the data. Because of that, it is going to assign a very large cost if you are going to use uh, very well uh, separated map points in order to represent uh, nearby data points and it is going to allocate a very small cost if you are going to use um, a nearby map points in order to represent widely separated data points. So, in this diagram, it is uh, it is very uh, nicely explained that uh, how you can, uh, how this SNE will work uh, based on this KL divergence. So, here you can see that first it is going to iterate uh, this, uh, initialize these allocations of these uh, data points in a lower dimensional space. Then, um, and uh, so, at the very beginning, uh, these uh, representations in a low dimensional space uh, will not be a very good uh, representative in terms of a high dimensional space because of that we have a, a, we might have a very high KL divergence. So, it is going to minimize these uh, KL divergence by iteration by iteration based on gradient descent algorithm. So, at the end you can see that uh, if we do like that, at the end uh, we would be able to see that at the end uh, there will be a very good representation of the data in our low dimensional space. So, I think uh, I forgot to tell you that in our high dimensional space when we calculate these uh, conditional probabilities here based on this formula we need to estimate our variance. So, in order to estimate this uh, variance and also you can see that for uh, each and every data point, uh, I'm sorry, so each and every data point this variance will not be same. That means, if these data points are in a very uh, dense region then variance will be a very small value and also if these uh, data points are in a very uh, sparse region then this variance will be a very high value. At the same time, this uh, variance is uh, associated with uh, another hyperparameter which is called perplexity. So, this uh, perplexity actually measures this effective number of neighbors that each data point should have. So, uh, this perplexity and a uh, variance can be interconnected using these two uh, formulas. So, in order to identify the uh, correct value for the, the variance, uh, a first user should uh, uh, give a value for this perplexity. 
So after that, what you have this algorithm will do is it will basically uh, solve this equation in order to find the uh, correct value for the variance. So in order to uh, speed up these uh, computations, what it will do is it is going to do a binary search in order to calculate the correct value for this sigma or uh, variance. So although this SN is doing a very good job in terms of uh, visualizing this high dimensional data, there are mainly uh, two problems which are associated with this SNE. The uh, first problem is that this uh, cost function here in this SNE is very difficult to optimize. And also there's a, another problem which is called as this uh, crowding problem. So in order to solve this uh, first issue, they have a proposed uh, symmetric version of this K, uh, KL divergence, which is called this, uh, which is denoted using this formula over here. So here, instead of calculating conditional probabilities, they have proposed to calculate joint probabilities between high dimensional data points and low dimensional data points. So these uh, conditional, uh, so these uh, joint probabilities in terms of uh, high dimensional data setting is going to calculate using this formula over here. And when you calculate the gradient of this cost function, it is now is in this form. So it is, I mean, uh, relatively in a simpler form compared to the previous form. Because of that, we can uh, very easily compute these uh, gradients. So these uh, gradients can be uh, treated as uh, forces between uh, these two, uh, I mean, uh, forces between these uh, data points. So there can be actually uh, two types of forces, attractive forces and repulsive forces. So when you consider these uh, data points, these all data points will repel each other in order to maintain the structure of the data in low dimensional space. And also in order to maintain this structure, it will attract uh, nearby data points. Because of that, it will form these uh, attractive forces and repulsive forces. So this uh, gradient can be treated as this resultant uh, force based on these two forces. So uh, now I'm going to talk about this uh, crowding problem. So in this crowding problem, it says that this uh, in this uh, low dimensional space or low dimensional map that this area which is available to accommodate moderately distant data points will not be large enough compared to this area which is uh, available to accommodate nearby data points. Because of that, these uh, nearby data points will not be uh, representative, uh, represented very well in this low dimensional space. So in order to solve this problem, they have proposed this, uh, this extension of SNE, which is called this TSNE. So this in TSNE, what it's going to do is, it is going to calculate this high dimensional similarities based on this Gaussian distribution and in this uh, low dimensional space it is going to calculate these uh, similarities between the data points in terms of t distribution with one degrees of freedom where you can calculate these joint probabilities using this formula. So the main reason behind is that this t distribution with one degrees of freedom has heavy tails. Because of that, it contain more area to accommodate moderately distant data points in terms of probability compared to a Gaussian distribution. So in my next video, I'm going to talk about uh, some examples of this TSNE and extensions of this uh, TSNE, which will uh, further improve the results of uh, TSNE. Thank you.